Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'll be chatting with Ricardo Davila, a GTR LM Nismo engineer, to help get some insight on the design of this vehicle. What's your uh, title in this? <laughs> I think Chief Looker, you know. Chief Looker? Yeah. Ah, I don't know, I, I've never asked. Basically I was a technical director at Nismo on the GT project and run a lot of projects for Nissan, worked with them since 96. So just about where we have a Nissan car running. You know. So conventional wisdom for a race car, you know, a lot of people are going to want to put the engine in the middle or towards the rear and then drive the rear wheels for load transfer reasons and keeping your center of gravity more centrally located. So what is the advantage of having the engine up front in this car and why drive the front wheels? A lot of uh, race car development is actually derived from the rules. So I think it fundamentally what you have on, on an LMP. One of the ways they were trying to keep uh, the speed, the downforce of the car you know, limited was by uh, what they did was actually cut down the size of the rear wing and they cut size down the rear diffuser. It's a okay. very simple, too thin, uh, they define the angle you can have, but not the angle, they define the slope you can have, you can have 200 millimeters high, flat plane. Okay, so everyone's running answer. the same diffuser. Yes. So effectively what uh, actually stops the car from getting more downforce is the size of the rear wing and the diffuser. You okay. end up being limited. The front end, uh, look at it again this way, what you, uh, the downforce you derive from underneath the car by ground effect is uh, on a lift the drag uh, perspective is much better than a wing sitting in the air. You know, for the same amount of downforce you can generate with ground effect a much more effective uh, quantity of downforce. Now, when you're limited on the rear, like it is by the regulations, how will you get more downforce on the car? You have almost a free diffuser on the front, which can do a lot of work. Okay. So, to make that downforce balance with the center of gravity of the car, it means you have to take the center of gravity forward, you can generate more downforce in the front. Okay. Yeah. And when you have more weight on the front and more downforce in the front... You might as well you, be driving the front. You can. Well, this is, comes again from the uh, energy recovery and the energy uh, delivery part. Right. If you look at the Formula 1, the Formula 1 is recovering energy from the back of the, of the car, from the rear wheel. You are trading off uh, braking into a uh, disc, or into braking into an energy recovery system. Mm -hmm. When you brake, you transfer weight to the front. So look at it basically when you're braking your car with a right. weight transfer, you have 80% of the weight to the front and 20% to the rear. So right. just to keep the car on that straight line, you can only use this 20% because you start taking too much uh, braking right. out so to the rear. The, the car other is very unstable. That are recovering energy doing it through the rear? No, they are doing it to the front. Okay. But they are also limited in amount because they can recover to the front because of the percentage they have. They have, say, 50-50, and the brake okay. goes to 70-30. Okay. But we already start at, say, near 70% of the front. So when we are fully braking, we can recover, say, 90% of the front. So we can recover much more energy than they are can. Are there teams that are recovering from all four wheels, or is uh, everyone No, not at the moment. Okay. Really, yeah. You have a problem also by the regulation. You're allowed to recover from certain places, and, for instance, we can, uh, use the internal combustion engine to give the power to the rear. But the way we are running the car, with the amount of uh, uh, weight distribution, it makes sense to run it off the front, because we've got enough weight and enough downforce to the front to be able to drive the car through the front wheels. Right. And looking at long range at the amount of energy we want to recover, if you want to release all this energy, you have to have your MGU and your uh, ICE uh, <laughs> giving on the different places, we can then release all this energy on the rear, only in a straight line. This gives you a secondary advantage that because we're not using the rear tires out of the corner to uh, give, uh, balance the car sideways and longitudinally by the, the, the right. traction, we have all that free to put it on a straight line. We can have smaller tires. Having a smaller tire means we can have a bigger rear diffuser. So we have a more efficient rear diffuser. Oh, so okay. the, the all the, as I say, it is rules. So is the width of the diffuser not restricted based on? It, it ends up being between the two uh, rear wheels. Okay. And so all the teams are running 14, and because you can run nine inches, yes. you can widen the diffuser. You can widen the diffuser, and secondly, we can also have a better control of the. Still over over there from the inner rear wheel wells, 
because this uh, spills over the fuse and you lose the fuse efficiency. We can have a separating you know, feed or voltage generator or whatever and separate the spillover and keep it outside the fuse. So not only it's wider, it's also more efficient. Very so, clever. You know, as you go around, you, you tick all the little spots. Now, also running a front engine means that you can actually make the whole console and put the radiator in the front, have the whole package in the front, which works correctly for your weight distribution and liberates the side of the monocoque. You got a fixed size for your cockpit, for all your driver volumes or whatever, mm -hmm. and we can have the true tunnel. So we have this huge amount of air which goes through the two tunnels and is a good way of generating front downforce. We don't have to actually have air from the diffuser coming out and spinning out through the wheel openings and side exits. It's all going straight through the car. So effectively, you're almost reducing your frontal area because when you're pulling air through the uh, diffuser coming out, spinning to the side of the car, you have what we call wake drag. You know, okay. so you have the central uh, cross section of the car is like this. Sure. The air which is spinning sideways makes the apparent frontal area bigger because you're dragging this cone of spilled air on the side. Right. Yeah, just putting it all through the middle. So, you know, all, it ticks all the boxes. You go round and round and everything helps each other. So it does give you some issues. Uh, the amount of uh, traction and turning power you can get out of the wheel is a function of, of the friction surface. So if you've got, say, uh, at 1G, you've got 100 kilos on that wheel, say that the coefficient of uh, grip is 1, you can have 100 kilos, 360 degrees around the tire in any direction. If you're cornering, you have that 100 kilos lateral force. Now, when you go into a corner and you're trying to put power on, so you've got side force and uh, right. uh, you put it at 90 degrees, what actually happens is that the resultant of the load you put on the tire, say it's at 45 degrees, you will have 0.7% uh, to the side. Right. You will not be able to have one and one. Right, right. So on a front, uh, on a front wheel drive car, you have the, a limited capacity for acceleration. It reduces your acceleration in the corner. Straight line is not a problem because you've got the, the vertical force. Right. Just laterally is not a problem. But when you get the combined forces, you have a, a drop-off. Now you combat that by running a tire and you have the vertical force. So everybody else say at 25% of the force on that single front tire, we have got 35%. So we increase okay. our, our uh, 1G right. footprint. So essentially what's happening is your center of gravity is shifted towards the front of the car, but you're also shifting your aerodynamic downforce towards the front of the car. So even though your front tires are doing more work, when they're accelerating out of a corner, mm -hmm. they have more downforce on them to be mm -hmm. able to do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're doing this balancing act, which is the out of compromise. Every racing car is the out of compromise. You want the draggiest possible car on the braking to decelerate faster. If you have a very clean car, it can't brake very well. So you are juggling all the parameters, braking, mid-corner, power on, exit, and straight line. You're trying to make the best sort of package yeah. that will fit track. Now, each particular track has, you know, your sweet spot changes. Some tracks are just uh, stop and go tracks, you know, the Mickey Mouse corner is very slow, you don't have any aero. So other tracks are uh, straight line. Uh, uh, Le Mans is one of those, uh, Rickard, Spa. It's a straight line track, high speed because the amount of time you spend on high speed is more than the time you spend in slow corners. So right. you juggle all the parameters. Right. Let's say that we are biased more towards a Lima car okay. than so for a car that's going to run on a... more high speed. Yes, they're okay. not biased that much for a, a, a Mickey Mouse track where you should yeah. just little chicanes and you have second gear or first gear corners. Perfect. So, so well, thank you for taking the time to chat with me about this. It's been good to learn about it. Yep, thank you. So thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And if you'd like to see more on Nissan's LMP1 car, check out the video description for links to their channel.